Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, today is Monday, June 26, 2017, 9 a.m. Uh, group group 440 of the Nevada State Business Center. Uh, I'd like to call the meeting to order uh, and do a roll call. Uh, Commissioner Rondo? Here. Commissioner Avicino? Here. Commissioner Carpenter? Here. Good morning, sir. How are you? Good morning. Okay, great. Is there any public comment, uh, either in the room or on the phone? Uh, Chairman uh, Marnell, we have an individual in the back that'd like to make a comment. Okay, great. All right, sir, if you can stand up for it here and speak loudly so uh, Chairman Marnell will hear you. Yes, uh, Willie Suarez, booksilver1.com. Uh, yes, I'm, I'm sorry, Willie what? Willie Suarez, S U A R E Z. And what was the address? Uh, Boxeo, Cubano, Cuban Boxing.com. Cuban Boxing.com? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, I, I wonder when, when the fight took place after the fight, there was a little bit. Slow, slow, slow down, speak slowly, uh, uh, and then uh, speak specific for the fight. So, Chairman, uh, after, know. after the fight concluded, there Which was like, Guillermo Rivera's places with the I'm sorry, what was the fight? The fight? Guillermo Rivera's places with Moisés Flores, one of the fights you guys are going to discuss here today. Uh, that's uh, going to be covered under new business number four, sir, unless you'd like to make your comment right now. So, so we're going to address that a little bit later. And I'll that's okay, I can't wait for that one. Yes, sir. We'll get right to that. Well, excuse me, Mr. Chairman, Ed McGraw with the AV's office. Are you going to allow public comment during that hearing? Or? No, no, I'm not. I should make it down. Okay. okay. So, so, so after the fight happened, there was a series of interview by Gene Lampley of HBO to co-commissioner Bob Bennett. In, on this interview, he asked one question: If the commissioner saw whatever happened during the fight on the tape, and Mr. Bob Bennett said that he didn't see it, but he asked about what happened to the people in the van from HBO. I wonder if that is part of the regulation that as a, co as a co commissioner and the person in charge there, you don't actually have to see what happened. You just have to relay on whatever somebody else from HBO saw in the video. I wonder if that is a, a MO uh, at this particular Mr. Chairman, I cannot understand one thing that the gentleman is suggesting. A commission. Okay, I'm going to mute all the lines and then I'm going to unmute the commissioners. So just give me a couple of seconds. I think it's too close to the mic. It could be better. What's the His speaking is too close to the mic. He's got a mic here too. Okay. Oh. So, Commissioner, uh, Chairman, I'm now you're unmuted. Uh, Commissioner Alonso, you are now unmuted. And Commissioner Evansino, you're unmuted. So, we can try again. Again? Okay. Thank you. Uh, uh, com Commissioner, uh, excuse me, Chairman uh, Marnell and Commissioner Evansino and uh, Commissioner Alonso, can you hear me okay? Yep, really well. Okay. Uh, the, gen yeah. the gentleman is asking, uh, uh, he's from uh, boxing out in Cuba. Cubanboxing.com. Cubanboxing.com. His question uh, specifically was, is that uh, the executive director, Bob Bennett, uh, missed, missed the call, and uh, he stated to Jim Lampley that he went back uh, and asked him, well, how did you make this call, and that we reviewed it uh, by asking somebody back in the van for the replay of the decision. His question in particular is, is that our MO for the Nevada State Athletic Commission? We have no response. We appreciate his comment, and who's the next person? This is a public comment period, not a question and answer session. So this is not a time to do interviews. So do we have anybody else in the room or on the phone? Yeah. That's public comment. We do, Jim and Marnell. We have one more person. There's a microphone. Great, but come up and let them speak. If you can identify yourself. My name, my name is Dino Da Vinci. I'm with the Street Science. My name is Paul. Uh, D-I-N-L. Uh, last name is D-A. It's space D-I-N-C-I. -I. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning. I'm fighting a cold, so I hope uh, my voice is consistent. No, I have one. I thank you. Um, attending to the same fight. Uh, I have an opportunity to see it in real time. The referee, I thought, did a great job. Uh, I know Mr. Kutzer and Mr. Ratna. Uh, 
just a couple of things. I think it's clear it's a no contest. I know the reason why. I would like to hear what you guys have to say first. Um, and, and the fighter should be heavily fined, the Cuban fighter, or even because it was an extended penalty that morphed into <coughs> uh, to when uh, he issued the, the blow that considered the KO blow. Whether the kid was faking it or not is irrelevant. Uh, I believe it's no contest, but I'd like to comment at the end. If you don't accept comments, then you know, do it on our website. No, this is this is a comment right now, sir. Uh, is that going to be addressed? Is, it, is the decision going to stand uh, to make it a KO win? Chairman Marnell, did you hear the question? I did, and we don't have a response to that. That's not what this is about. This is public comment. So if you have anything else, we'd be happy to hear it, and we can you can hear what we have to say and what we do when we get there. Understood. No, that, that concludes what I have to say. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Okay. Uh, calling forward now, uh, I am F. New Business Number Four, the hearing on Boxer Moses Flores protest. <laughs> of the bad decision from this June 17, 2017 contest against Guerrero um, Rigoda for possible action. So, uh, Executive Director Bennett, are you there this morning? Yes, I am, Chairman. Good morning. Are you awake? That would be myself. <laughs> oh, good. That's a uh, somewhat rare. That's a benefit. <laughs> So, um, how, how would you like to relay some of the information here about this request? Hey, uh, what I'd like to first ask is if all the, if the chairman and the commissioners had the opportunity to review the Rigendale Flores fight and also had the opportunity to review referee Vic Dracula's statement. And uh, Mr. Chairman, this is Skip Adams. You know, I have reviewed the uh, uh, CD that Commissioner Alonzo has delivered to my office uh, several times. I have read, uh, carefully read uh, the um, referee Dick Dracilich's uh, note here of four pages. And uh, I think it's very clear uh, in my mind at this point. Thank you for your cooperation. <laughs> Yeah, this is Chairman Mardell, uh, Executive Director Bennett. I have done the same. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Alonzo has also um, watched the DVD, read the statement, and the side to interview um, coverage. And Commissioner Carpenter has reviewed all the pertinent material also. Chairman uh, Edward Goff of the AG's office, uh, it would help if you guys would tell us what video or DVD you're referring to. This was the original HBO DVD provided to me by HBO the night of the event. Thank you. My pleasure, Deputy Attorney General. So with that being said, um, first of all, I would like to clarify, in case anybody has any questions, why I was not ringside um, uh, during the co-main event. I had previously made plans with referee Tony Weeks to do the pre-fight instructions with uh, Ward and Kovalev during the Beevil Agni fight. However, when I called referee Weeks on the telephone, he advised me that the fighters were not ready to receive the pre-fight instructions. I said, very well, please contact me when they are. And as a standard operational procedure, everyone knows that during those pre-fight instructions for a championship fight and a co-main, we go back there to listen to them. In the event there is a controversy, uh, we can uh, always <coughs> reference the rules meeting and the pre-fight instruction. So that is why I was not immediately available when this controversy took place. Um, Upon coming to ringside and seeing what was taking place, I immediately spoke with Vic and Robert Berg. To make a long story short, it was brought to my attention that Vic did not hear, referee Draculich did not hear the bell, and in essence was not sure whether the punch was thrown before or after the bell that knocked down Moises Flores by Guillermo Rigondeaux. Um, 
so at that point in time, uh, we went over to the uh, video to look at the replay, which unfortunately did not have audio, which as you know, I have asked for for years, and I'm sure now that will uh, come to fruition. So as a standard operating procedure in the past, I've always had a telephone there so that I could call the HBO uh, trailer and speak to whoever was hearing, uh, watching the fight and, and, and listening to the audio. That night I was speaking with a gentleman uh, by the name of Rick, last name unknown. I had previously touched base with Rick to make sure he would be the gentleman that I would be talking with in the event of a controversy or in the event I had any questions. When Vic brought to my attention, excuse me, when referee Dracula brought to my attention that he wasn't sure when the punch was thrown, I called the truck. Rick informed me, I had asked Rick, was the punch thrown before or after um, the, Mr. Flores fell down, was knocked down, was knocked out. And the truck told me that the punch was thrown before the bell. I had repeated my question to Rick in the truck, saying words to the effect, so you're telling me that the punch landed before the bell. And Rick said, that is correct. Unbeknownst to me, Commissioner Alonzo was sitting behind me, and she was able to verify what was told to me. Shortly, immediately thereafter, I went to Vic and I said, Vic, you just told me that the punch was good, that it was thrown before the bell that knocked uh, Flores out by rigging out. Therefore, Rick, uh, uh, referee Draculich went into the ring and uh, declared rigging down the winner by way of uh, knockout. Subsequent to that decision being made by referee Dracula, who was a sole arbitrator, as all referees are in any of our fights, I was asked by HBO to do an interview, of which, of course, I accommodated them. Uh, I had articulated exactly what was told to me in the truck, as far as the audio goes, referenced the punch. Mr. Lampley brought to my attention that he was quite sure, he was unequivocal, that the punch was thrown after the bell, at which point in time, to make a long story short, I said, well, if that is the case, and that proves to be accurate, then what will take place is I will review the tape, I will speak with referee Draculich, who is on the, on the phone today, I might add, and um, I will bring it to the attention of the chairman, and if the chairman deems necessary, then we will have a meeting to possibly uh, have a, a new ruling. Because according to HBO, the punch was thrown after the bell. As all of you, uh, I reviewed that tape uh, of the fight early Sunday morning at 8 o'clock. I was on the phone from 8 to 2 between reviewing the fight and speaking with a litany of, litany of people to include referee Drick, Vic Draculich. Uh, Vic also had the opportunity to uh, look at the fight. Uh, he and I had an in-depth conversation, and he subsequently prepared the statement that all of you have, I believe it's a three-page statement, where it is clearly, uh, it is clear to me, after reviewing that tape, that the punch was thrown after the bell, based on the fact that the punch was thrown after the bell and that it was not intentional, according to referee Dra Vic Draculich, it would therefore be a no decision opposed to a DQ disqualification if it was intentional because four rounds had not been completed. We were only in the first round. And that is, is in essence, what took place. Unless anyone would like to add or I may have left anything out. So, in essence, uh, in conclusion, uh, Vic is on, on the line. Uh, 
as always, he's the sole arbitrator. It's, it's my recommendation, but ultimately rests with him and your approval, Chairman, that this uh, decision be overturned to be a no decision, not a uh, win by knockout for Mr. Rigandell. Chairman Marnell? Yes, sir. Uh, I agree with everything that Executive Director Bob Bennett has said. I just would also like to add that in real time, these are two very quick fighters. They were both throwing very rapid punches and both were throwing punches after the bell. So uh, it was unintentional. So it was during the fight mode and I don't want to dissect it too much, but uh, it, was, it was very much unintentional. It was after the bell. So I agree with uh, Executive Director Bob Bennett for no contest. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Alonzo or uh, Commissioner Alonzo, do you have anything to add? Uh, Chairman, I don't know if you'd like to hear from Referee Draculix, but he is on the line. I will in a second. I'd like to uh, finish hearing from the commissioners first. Yes, sir. Uh, Chairman, this is Edward Hollick, the AG's office again. Uh, for the record, just to keep a clean record, could we, were you, when you referred to the statement of Mr. Draftwich, uh, were you referring to the uh, written statement that is, appears in new item number four uh, materials, pages three through six? Are you asking me that? Uh, yeah, I just want to verify that that's the written statement. I, I didn't make that statement. You should ask whoever made that statement that question. I didn't make that statement. Yes, that is statement number four. Number of, or it's statement new four, in new four, pages three through six. Okay, thank you. Just to make the record clear. That's correct. Chairman Marnell, um, having been in attendance at the fight and more importantly watching the ACO DVD provided as well as the um, referee record of referencing page three through six in our uh, document. I also support executive uh, Bennett, executive director Bennett's statement. Okay. Chairman. Uh, Commissioner, do you know, do you have any thoughts on this, sir? Uh, if you could uh, allow, allow Vic to speak, that would be great. Uh, 
Okay, yeah. Chairman, also, I think you, you might want to cons consider uh, having Deputy Attorney General Caroline Bateman go through the reconsideration uh, legal process for the record as well, sir, respectfully. Okay, well, let's, let's get all the testimony out of the way and then we can proceed forward. Yes, sir. Good morning, referee Dracovich. This is Naira. Can you hear us? I can. Fantastic. You're on unmute yeah. now, and the commissioners and people in the room can hear you. Uh, uh, Mr. Commissioner and uh, members, uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity. Uh, as you have already indicated, the three page memo that I prepared for your review pretty much states what happened that evening. Uh, it was a rather unique situation to say the least. And uh, other than the misinformation that we received, I think everything was you know, properly handled. Uh, and I leave that for your decision. Uh, but my, my, my memo pretty much sets forth uh, the chain of events as they occurred that evening. Thank you for this opportunity to speak to you. Okay, great. Is there anybody that would like to ask any questions? Okay, great. I will turn it over back to uh, Executive Director Bip, uh, Executive Director Bennett and uh, Attorney General Bateman. Uh, Attorney General Bateman, do you have anything or a process you would like us to follow here before I ask for a motion? And Chairman, just to make um, a point of clarification, there was a request made by Mr. Bernode, I believe that's how you pronounce it, from Guillermo Rigando's camp to review a, a different version of the fight uh, the bout video that's through Sky TV video rather than HBO. Um, and as a point of record, the chairman did grant that request to have that video admitted into evidence and it was provided to all the commissioners. So I wanted to make that clear to uh, Mr. Rigando's camp that that was reviewed by the commissioners. Um, second, I wanted to note that uh, Commissioner Avancino brought to attention NAC 467.770 um, that governs changes of decisions after a contest or exhibition. And it lays out the three factors that the commission may use to overturn a, a decision after the contest. Those three factors are if the commission determines there was collusion that affects the result of the contest or exhibition, Second is the compilation of the scorecards of the judges discloses an error which shows that the decision was given to the wrong unarmed combatant. Or three, as a result of an error in interpreting a provision of this chapter, the referee has rendered an incorrect decision. Um, it's, it's notable that a missed call on behalf of a referee is not grounds to overturn a decision. So. It would have to be that the referee committed an error in interpreting a provision of this chapter, um, most notably the replay uh, regulation that allows for referees to review replay video to determine whether or not a blow that caused an injury that prevented a fight from continuing on, the, on behalf of the other contestant um, was a legal blow or a foul a foul that's either accidental or intentional. In this case, I believe that the, uh, the referee did need to replay video, and I think um, referee Dracovich made that point um, in his statement as well as on the phone, that he wasn't sure when that blow took place, was it before or after the bell. And at that point, it, the commission would have to determine whether or not whether or not referee Dracovich followed the procedure laid out um, to properly review the replay video. And that would be audio and video prior to making a determination rather than uh, relying on the Executive Director Bennett or anyone else's statement regarding what happened at the time of the blow. So if the commission determines that referee Dracovich committed an error in terms of the replay protocol and should have reviewed the video with audio and video prior to making his ruling rather than uh, rather than relying on you know, someone from HBO's production team or the executive director, 
that would be a ground to consider changing the decision. If this is simply a, a matter of whether or not referee Draculich committed an error because he missed the call, that would not be grounds to change this decision. Um, and I can, I can clarify that if any of the commissioners has any questions. Well, I think that you've made that very clear, at least in my mind, but I think it's pretty obvious why we're considering this. I concur with that, Mr. Chairman. I agree, Chairman. So, and I think it would, it would be obvious that it lines up uh, this paper with what you're saying. You know, he did not have all the information at the time he was looking at the replay, and he made a bad decision based on that information from the replay. So, is that what you're saying? That would be a determination for the commission, Chairman. No, I know, but is that what you're saying to be grounds to reconsider this? Correct. If the commission determined that he committed an error in the replay protocol, correct, that would be grounds for changing the decision. Okay, super. All right, is there anything else you'd like to add before I ask for a motion? Chairman, no? Ch Chairman this is Ed McGoggin with the AG's office. Uh, sorry to interrupt. Uh, did you want to address this guy video? This guy? Not really. Okay, well, is it or is it not going to be admitted into evidence? It was. It was. I think it's already been admitted. So okay, maybe, thank you. Okay, great. Is anybody, uh, are any commissioners ready to make a motion or do they need further information? I am ready to make a motion, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, sir. Uh, I would move to, uh, uh, I, I would move to change the decision of uh, the Flores Rigan Blue uh, event, which was held on June 17, 2017, from a, a knockout in favor of Mr. Rigan Blue to a, a no decision based upon the information that has been provided to us and in accord with uh, uh, regulation section NAC 467.770. Okay, great. Uh, do I have a motion on the floor? Do I have a second? Uh, what, real, real quick uh, for clarification, this is Commissioner Carpenter. Is the no decision the same as a no contest in the legal aspect? Yes, well, uh, I think, yes, go ahead. That's anonymous. Okay, thank you. Okay, I have a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second the motion of uh, Commissioner Avancino. Great, so I have a motion and I have a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. Okay, great. Uh, do we have any public comments in the room or on the phone? We are just getting ready to unmute the lines for a little comment. The conference is no longer in listen only mode. I sure. think, am I allowed to speak? Yes, yeah, yeah. come on, come on. Uh, Chairman Marnell, there's a gentleman walking up for a, on the comments, sir. You know, come in, just one young I think one of the things that added to the confusion was the, uh, with the bell ringing. In this particular case, the bell ringing had nothing to do with the incident because it was a continue, his success, Rigondeaux's success, came at the extension of a, an extended foul where he held the opponent behind the head they went three punches, and as the referee was trying to jump in, and uh, I, I don't know what his intent was, but it would seem his body language was to give him a warning. I don't believe he would DQ him at that point, but it was a continuation. There was no break in the action, and because of that, the belt, and one fighter's trying to defend himself and fire back, and, uh, uh, and Rigondeaux also continued punching. There's no way uh, he could be rewarded with, uh, with a victory. On the other side, it was so early in the fight, and one last thing, there is a difference between no decision and no contest. I used to head up a record keeping entity, and they would debate that. So just if it's gonna go into record, it'd be interesting to, to get some consistency. But lastly, just to, just to finish the thought, I think you guys made the right call. 
Um, and I think the referee did an outstanding job under the conditions he was, he was given. And I believe on camera, I only saw the HBO feed. I believe Vic was saying he, he was hitting, he was holding and hitting. So he was very aware that a penalty had incurred and he was in the process of doing his job. When, and again, sometimes it's tough to hit the bell. So that's why I would say it's not a DQ loss. If he, if he clearly heard the bell and then struck the opponent, then I believe it would have been a DQ loss. Thank you. Chairman Marnell, okay, so Chairman Marnell, we have another speaker coming to the podium. Super, thank you. Uh, Willie Suarez, Chairman. Uh, I, I think it's sad the fact that the, the referee admitted to not hear the bell. And I assume that maybe Rick Mundiaos also didn't hear the bell. Uh, I believe that most of the people that watched the fight agree that uh, Flores actually jumped into the floor. It was, I mean, it was a delay. By the time he jumped into the floor, he, he was not knocked down by, by most people's account. Uh, but I thank you guys for the opportunity to be here present. And, I respect the whatever decision you guys make. So, thank you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Chairman Marnell, no okay, other no other public comments. Here. Thank you, sir. Any, any public comment on the phone? Yes, hello. Um, this is Dino Duva. I'm Guillermo Rigado's promoter from Rock Nation. Good morning, Dino. Hello. Uh, hi. I, I just have uh, two things I'd like to say. One. Would it be possible, is it public records, to see the referee Zinder Dracula's statement? Or is that something that we, we don't really get to see? Yeah, it's possible to get it, uh, Dino, uh, if you submit a public records request. Uh, you can find okay. that on our website, sir. Okay, no problem. The only other thing I'd like to say is, first of all, I just want to let the commissioners and everyone know that, you know, in my opinion, Nick Dragulich is one of the best referees in the world, and Bob Barrett is one of the best, if not the best, executive director of the world for the boxing commissions in, 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 in Nevada. And um, these things happen sometimes, and while Guillermo Rigan, though, is a great world champion, and he's, all, he's, he's obviously our boxer that we promote. The one thing I would like you to just keep in mind and ask that you consider um, is that both fighters were throwing punches after the bell. I think that's very clear. Um, I don't know that it's fair for Mr. Brigham to get penalized given all the circumstances that happened. And the other thing, that, that I think should be considered and thought about is when, when, when Flores went down, it was very questionable over whether or not he had ever intended to try to get up. And also his manager, even after the fight was over in an interview, stated that he intentionally stayed down on the canvas. The reason I'm bringing that up is, is that if there's an unintentional foul Normally, the fighter who was fouled would get a certain period of time to recover and compete in the battle. And if he doesn't, or if he refuses, the, 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 he would lose by knockout, by technical knockout. And while I know that it never got to that point in this, in this situation, I think that was a clear uh, path that this might have been headed towards. And I just don't think Mr. Riggin, though, should be penalized given all these circumstances. And, you know, him, him, him being switched to a no decision, you know, could open things up for him to get uh, a rematch order by the WBA and things like that. I mean, it could, it could really adversely affect his career. And that's the only, that's the thing that concerns me about reversing this to a no decision. Um, and look, I thank you for your time, and I just, you know, I just hope this doesn't adversely affect Mr. Rigondeaux's career because it would be unfair if it did. And that's all I wanted to say. And I respect the decision of whatever the commissioners decide. And again, I think you guys are the greatest commissioner in the world, and I appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Is there any additional public comment? 
Okay, as for the chairman's report, I have none. Are there any matters for future agendas from any commissioner? Chairman, we're just muting the line, and if you can give me a couple of seconds to unmute your line. So, Chairman, you can go ahead, and I'm just unmuting the other commissioners. Okay, uh, as for the chairman's report, I have none. Are there any matters for future agendas from any other commissioners? Mr. Chairman, I had just one uh, that I had re expressed uh, to uh, Executive Director uh, Bennett that uh, well, we have an opportunity to consider sanctioning this uh, proposed Mayweather-McGregor uh, contest on August 26th, and, and perhaps it would be helpful to have the Executive Director make his presentation on uh, his uh, assessment of fairness and the uh, qualifications of Mr. McGregor's with respect to our boxing rules. I just would like to hear that and hear it in the open if we have that opportunity. We, we will, uh, we do and we will. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, any other commissioners? No, sir. Yes, sir. Great, I have a motion for adjournment. Motion to adjourn. So moved. All in favor? Aye. 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 You all have a wonderful, wonderful week. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Chairman.